Three years ago, I gave up my life as a barrister for the kitchen. I describe myself as a curry evangelist. I have dedicated my life to teaching people how to cook curry. We taste every dish that comes out, and if it isn't completely up to standard, it is scrapped. You see, in India, we never thicken sauces, so very often we'd use soft vegetables like this to produce a sweet, thick sauce. There's nowhere that you could tell that it was, in fact, a fermented, naturally effervescent green tea. These are words I think that they're hiding away from, when, in fact, I think those are some of the greatest selling points. It's so beautiful and exotic and almost sun-baked, isn't it? And where there is celebration like this, there's usually some brilliant food. I've been really surprised by what I've learned about Pakistani Kashmiri food. It is fragrant, it is light. Learning about this kind of food from these passionate cooks has been such a privilege. You're going to do some dancing? Don't right? even start. <laughs> Don't even start. One of the problems that Joe faces in the marketplace is that chilli sauce is seen as this macho, muscle-flexing, terrifying thing. He needs to tone that message down because that will put many people off. What I'm glad to see is that you are now focusing on flavour. Roast garlic, you know, yeah. this will really draw people into the fact that what you actually are brandishing is flavour. OK. That's the challenge. OK. And that's what you like, isn't yeah. It? yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the flavour and not about the heat, and that is the message he needs to drive home. Whoa, it's not easy. Oh. I think you're going to find these too floppy. Yeah. This is a bit more like a washing line, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I see your oh, frown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, is this one good? Do you want it a bit darker here? Yeah? Now I feel I'm at home. <laughs> it's just a little bit wrong. <laughs> this is what's so great, you think about Indian cooking being this complicated thing, don't you, with lots of roasting and grinding, grinding. and pre-prep and shopping. It's quick. It's very fresh, it's very crunchy. Vinegar, ginger, there is a good bit of heat to this. I'm finding it too hot. I'm getting the crisp of the fresh vegetables, I'm getting the two of the roti, which is dead comforting. Absolutely delicious. I'm gonna have one of each now. <laughs> Marshmallows are on the ascendance. We don't have a completely saturated marshmallow market yet. I'm getting the truffle, I'm getting butter. It's melting on the tongue. I would say that it's got a slight grain to its texture. Honestly, to me, this is a smooth pâté and not a parfait. Just in terms of how refreshing and zingy it is, it's like nothing else. It will take every ounce of passion and persuasion on their part to overcome that barrier. I've been raised on poor Benny Dorn paellas all my life. <laughs> and this was such a pleasant surprise. A business is as scalable as the market that demands it. I am so pleasantly surprised. This has very cleverly brought that taste of the Earl Grey out. The danger is that it is quite an elitist market. It needs to be accessible and she needs to demonstrate that in the shop. So turmeric, garam masala, yeah. cumin powder, chilli powder, yeah? Chili it's, yeah. it's real alchemy, you know, it's just the lobbing in. Hmm. Gorgeous. It's much tastier than normal rice pudding. I mean, it's messed up, but I, I do think I'm never going to yeah. eat a boiled egg any other way. <laughs>